good King Charles's golden days, the court preferred that Shakespeare's plays be tarted up with song and dance, a fashion it picked up in France, <laughs> to please the noble public's taste and further uh, the with music appositely placed, to please the noble, that's a bad stuff, <laughs> to please the noble public's taste and further to attract the lords, since women could now tread the boards, to amplify the scenic arts, they padded out the female parts. Some 60 years since Shakespeare's death, no one objected if Macbeth be altered to amuse the town, and Davenant could brave the crown of critics. Boldness he had mastered by claiming he was Shakespeare's bastard. <laughs> To suit the neopathic case, to the violence was soon effaced. Tragic decorum was the rage, so murders must take place off stage. Among the changes and the switches, more prominent become the witches, and to their functioning dramatic, they're now ballet, operate. Machines enable them to fly quite Lindbergh-like across the sky. Then the Macduffs have more to say, in what we call the Scottish play. As contrast to the wicked couple, they make a conscience-stricken double. <laughs> Don't be surprised if Davenant's poetic phrases blurs with cant. To combat topical sedition, he moralizes about ambition. Eager to improve, refine, he botches almost every line. <laughs> but music, as it glides and vaults, will easily smooth all the faults. Enough! Behold our recreation of arts, the charm of restoration. Thousand, 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 thousand
chant, the battle rages. The war has been going on for ages between Norwegians and the Scots. The thane of Cawdor threw his lot in with the Norsemen. A mistake, because the Scots will catch a break. A uh, thing, the meaning of the words are ranked between free men and lords. The Scottish camps full of anxiety, the outcomes shrouded in dubiety. King Duncan waits the end of day to learn which side has won the fray. Macduff that comes in haste. Long live the king. Whence comest thou, worthy thing? From Fife, great king, where Norway himself with infinite supplies long maintained a dismal conflict, aided by that most disloyal thane of Cawdor, till brave Macbeth opposed his bloody rage, after which his army fled. In brief, the victory was ours. No more that Thane of Cawdor shall deceive our confidence. Pronounce his present death. And with his former title, Great Macbeth, he hath deserved it. Sir, I'll see it done. Heading back from field of battle, Macbeth and Banquo fatally come across the sisters three. So fair and foul a day I have not seen. What are these so withered and so wild in their attire? They look not like the earth's inhabitants that yet are on. 
You should be women, and yet your looks forbid me to interpret so well. Speak if you can. What are you? All hail Macbeth. Hail to the fane of Blondes. All hail Macbeth. Hail to the fane of Hodor. All hail Macbeth, who shall be king hereafter. Good sir, what makes you start? And seem to dread events which sound so fair. To me you speak not. If you can look into the seeds of time, speak then to me, who neither beg your favors nor fear your hate. Hail. Hail. Lesser than Macbeth, and greater. Not so happy, yet much happier. Thou shalt get kings. Thou shalt ne'er be one. So all hail Macbeth and Banquo. Stay, you imperfect speakers, tell me more. I know I am fain of blondes, but how of Cordor? And how this promise that I shall be king, which is not within the prospect of belief, save from whence you have this strange intelligence. Speak, I charge you! neither can be good or ill. Fortune, methinks, which rains down honors on me, seems to rain blood, too. Oh, but these are but dreams. Look how my partner's wrapped. Come what come may, patience and time run through the roughest day. <sighs> Let's hasten to the king. We'll think upon these accidents at more convenient time, when we have maturely waited. Let it be so. Till then, enough. Come, friend. prophecy proves true when Duncan reaffirms it too. But in the process, he does swear his eldest son will be his heir. Our eldest, Malcolm, we name hereafter the Prince of Cumberland. Uh, now we'll hasten hence to Inverness. We'll be your guest, Macbeth. And there contract a greater debt than that which we have already owed you. <sighs> Ourself shall be the harbinger and bless our wife with the glad tidings of your approach. I humbly take my leave. My uh, worthy cordial. <laughs> Prince of Cumberland. That is a step on which I must fall down, or else or leap, for in my way it lies. This 
stars. Hide your fires. Let love no light see my black and deep desires. The sea shifts now to Inverness, a castle the Macbeths possess. While combat reigned, Macduff's fair wife had ventured from their home in fight, and the refuge sought with fame of glams, whose lady tries to calm her qualms. Madam, I have observed since you came hither, you have been still disconsolate. Pray tell me, are you in perfect health? Alas, how can I? My lord, when honor called him to the war, took with him half of my divided soul. If you are ill, repose may do you good. You'd best retire and try if you can sleep. Madam, I'll take your counsel. Now I have leisure, peruse this letter. They met me in the day of success, and when I desired to question them further, they made themselves heir. Whilst I entertained myself with the wonder of it, came missives from the king, who called me Thane of Cawdor by which title these wayward sisters had saluted me before and referred me to the coming on of time with Hail King that shall be. Lay it to thy heart and farewell. Glams thou art and Paul, and shall be what thou art promised. Yet I fear thy nature has too much of the milk of human kindness to take the nearest way. Oh, haste thee hither, that I may pour my spirits in your ear, and chastise with the valor of my tongue thy too effeminate desires. Come, all you spirits that wait on mortal thoughts, unsex me here. Empty my nature of humanity and fill it up with cruelty. Make thick my blood and stop all passage to remorse. You murdering spirits, come and fill my breasts with gall instead of milk. Make haste, dark night and hide me in a smoke as black as hell. My dearest wife, Duncan comes here tonight. When goes he hence? Tomorrow, as he purposes. Oh, never. Never may any son that morrow see. Be cheerful, sir. Bear welcome in your eye, your hand, your tongue. Look like the innocent flower, but be the serpent under it. We will withdraw and talk on further. Let your looks be clear. This change of countenance does be token fear. Duncan arrives with retinue and with his sons, who number two. Malcolm and Donald Bain, their names, all unawares, he loud declaims. This castle is a very pleasant seat. The air does sweetly recommend itself to our delighted senses. See, see, our honored hostess. Give me your hand. Conduct me to Macbeth. We love him highly.
well when done, then it were well it were done quickly. If his death might be without the death of nature in myself, and killing my own peace, it would suffice. But deeds of this complexion still return to plague the doer and destroy his peace. Yet let me think, he's here in double trust. First, as I am his kinsman and his subject, strong both against the deed. Then as his host, who should against his murderer shut the door. Besides, his virtues, like angels, plead against so black a deed. Oh, vaulting ambition! Thou o'erleaps thyself to fall upon another. For now, what news? Why have you left the chamber? Has he inquired for me? You know he has. We shall proceed no further in this business. He has honored me of late. And I have bought golden opinions from all sorts of people that should not now be cast aside so soon. Was the hope drunk wherein you dressed yourself? Has it slept since? And wakes it now to look so pale and fearful on what it wished so freely? The pretty peace. I dare do all that may become a man who dares do more is none. Nay, to be more than what you were, you would be so much more the man. I have given suck, and know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. I would. Whilst it was smiling in my face, have plucked my nipple from its boneless gums and dashed the brains out, had I so resolved as you have done for this. I am settled, and will stretch up each fainting sinew to this most bloody act. Oh, come. Let's delude the time with fairest show. Feigned looks must hide what the false heart doth know.
My husband. I have done the deed. Didst thou not hear a noise? I heard the owl scream and the crickets cry. Did you not speak? And methought I heard a noise cry. Sleep no more. Macbeth has murdered sleep. The innocent sleep. Sleep which locks up the senses with their care. Macbeth shall sleep no more. Why do you dream thus? Go, get some water and cleanse this filthy witness from thy hands. Why did you bring the daggers from the place? They must be there. Go. Carry them and stain the faces of the grooves with blood. I'll go no more. I am afraid to think what I have done. Give me the daggers. The sleeping and the dead are but as pictures. With his blood, I'll stain the faces of the grooms by that. It will appear their guilt. Hark! What knocking is this? Oh, horror! 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 Most sacrilegious murder has broken open the Lord's anointed temple and stole thence the life of the building. Ring the alarm bell! Awake! Awake! Oh, what noise is this? Our royal master's murdered. Murdered? By whom? I, I saw the king. His gaping wounds looked like a breach in nature. There I saw the murderers steeped in the color of their trade. Oh, but I repent me, I so rashly killed them. Guarded by virtue, I am resolved to find the utmost of this business. And I. And all. How goes the world, sir, now? Is it known who did this more than bloody deed? Those that Macbeth hath slain are most suspected. Alas, what good could they pretend? It is supposed they were suborned. Malcolm and Donaldbane, the king's two sons, are secretly stolen away from the court, which puts upon him suspicion of the deed. Then it is most like the sovereignty will fall upon Macbeth. He is already named and gone to Schoon to be invested. Will you to Schoon? No, cousin. I'll to fight. My wife and children, frightened at the alarm of this sad news, have thither led the way, and I'll follow them. May the king you go to see invested prove as great and good as Duncan was, but I'm in doubt of it. children of Macbeth, of violence have had enough, and so they flee from Inverness and make for fight in their distress. The blasted heath they soon approach in an anachronistic coach. <laughs> How fondly did my lord conceive that we should shun the place of danger by our flight from Inverness. The darkness of the day makes this heath seen the gloomy walks of death. Hark, my lord. Where are your children? They are securely sleeping in the carriage. Speak, sister, speak. Is the deed done?
foretell some dire predictions. He that believes ill news from such as these deserves to find it true. Their words are like their shape, nothing but fiction. Let us hasten to our journey. Macbeth's enjoyed his coronation, but not assuaged his perturbation. His conscience fears so steeped in guilt, all guessed was he the blood had spilt. He fears that Banquo's only son, Fleance, when all is said and done, will found the line of Scottish kings. And so, to deadly thoughts he clings. Hired murderers he pays a fee to slay those two most secretly. Here's our chief guest. <laughs> if he had been forgotten, it had been want of music to our feast. Tonight we hold a solemn supper, sir, and all desire your presence. Uh, riding this afternoon? Yes, royal sir. Is it far you ride? As far, great sir, as will take up the time twixt this and supper. Does your son with you? He does. And our time now calls upon us. I wish your horses swift and sure of foot. Farewell. I am no king till I am safely served. My fears stick deep in Banquo's successes. 
He chid the sisters when first they put the name of king upon me and bade them speak to him. Then prophet-like, they hailed him father to a line of kings. Rather than so, I will attempt yet further and blot out by their blood whate'er is written of them in the book of fate. It must be so. Great Duncan's bloody death can have no other author but Macbeth. His dagger now is to a scepter grown. From Duncan's grave, he has derived his throne. If the throne was by Macbeth ill paid, heaven's justice may without your sword sufficient vengeance pay. My country's dangers call for my defense against the bloody tyrant's violence. But why so far as England must you fly? The farthest part of Scotland is too nigh. Can you leave me, your daughter, and your son to perish by that tempest which you shun? He will not injure you. He cannot be possessed of such unmanly cruelty. All from the English king such succors crave as shall revenge the dead and the living save. Oh, my dear Lord! I find now thou art God. I am more valiant when unsafe alone. How now, my lord? Why do you keep alone, conversing with those thoughts that should have died with those they think on? What's done is done. Alas, we have but scotched the snake, not killed it. Come on, smooth your rough brow. Be free and merry with your guests tonight. Full of scorpions is my mind, dear wife. Thou knowest that Banquo and his flayouts lives. But they are not immortal. There's comfort yet in that. Be merry then. For ere the bat has flown, there shall be done a deed of dreadful note. What is it? Be innocent of knowing it, my dear wife, till thou plod the deed. Come, dismal night. Good things of day turn dark and overcast when night's black ancients to their prayers make haste. <laughs> Quoth Robert Burns, the plans best laid by mice and men are off the parade. The hitmen had assignment fumble, and in the hectic rough and tumble, they murder Banquo, earn their fee, but Fleance manages to flee. You know your own degrees. Sit down! Ourselves shall keep you company and play the humble host. To entertain you. <laughs> Our lady keeps her state, but you shall have her welcome to pronounce it for me, sir, to all our friends. <laughs> 
just as he must his guests amuse, Macbeth receives the dismal news. Oh, then comes my fit again. I had else been perfect, firm as a pillar founded on a rock. Now I'm checked with saucy doubts and fears. Will it please my lord to grace us with your company? Yes, I'll sit down. The table's full. Here is a place reserved. Where? Here. While he prepares to play the host, there enters Banquo's grisly ghost. We must agree to see so tragic, lacking industrial light and magic. <laughs> Which of you have done this? Oh, thou dost not say I did it! Oh, never shake thy gory locks at me! Are you a man? Why do you stare thus? When all's done, you look but on a chair. Time's up. And when the brains were out, the man would die. And there lie still, and now they rise again and thrust us from our seats. Give me some wine. Tell me more, for now I am bent to know the worst that may befall. I am in blood, stepped in so far, that should I wade no more, returning were as bad as to go war.
get a lot. on a show, a line of kings march by so slow, and further all his hopes to drown, each spectre wears a glittering crown. A crown offends my sight. A second, too, like the first. A third, too like the former. A fourth resembles him, ye filthy hags. But will they succeed each other till doomsday? 
another, yet I'll see no more. Ah! The bloody Banquo smiles upon me, and by his smiling seems to show that these are all successors of his race. My deeds shall henceforth into actions rise. The witches may be cruel, but not wise. With husband gone, of hope bereft, defenseless with her children left alone, her peace broke by disruptions, laid in a dust regards her option. My husband's flight was madness. To leave his wife and children in a place from whence himself did fly. He loves us not. Where shall I go? And whither shall I fly? I've done no harm. But I remember now I'm in a vicious world where to do harm is often prosperous and to do good accounted dangerous folly. I'll boldly in and dare this new alarm. What need they fear whom innocence doth arm? Macduff, meanwhile, in England waits until King Edward designates that Malcolm shall an army lead, equipped to invade with all speed Scotland, and to attack Macbeth, defeat his troops, and seal his death. Bleed! Bleed! War country! There cannot in all ransack hell be found the devil equal to Macbeth. Oh, Scotland! Scotland! When shalt thou see day again? The enemy is upon our borders. Scotland is in danger, but the indisposition of my wife detains me here. I am sick in her, and in my kingdom, too. The spur of my ambition prompts me to go and make my kingdom safe. Love, which softens me to pity her in her distress, curbs my resolve. How does my gentle love? Duncan is dead. No words of that. And yet to me he lives. His fatal ghost is now my shadow and pursues me wherever why do you follow me? I did not do it. Had not thy breath blown my ambition up into a flame, Duncan had yet been living. You were a man, 
and by the charter of your sex, you should have governed me. Resign your kingdom now, and with your crown, put off your guilt. Resign the crown, and with it, both our lives. Oh, I must have better counselors. What? Your witches? Curse on your messengers of hell! See me no more! I have had too much of kings already! I see the ghost again. Thou looks on me and shows thy wounded breast. Show it to the murderer!
In Shakespeare's play, we are spared no gore. We are shown what Macbeth had in store for Macduff's wife and children, too. Rough murderers, those victims slew before our eyes. But Davenant, atrocities will not descant. Yet when the news Macduff does hear, his agonies provoke a tear. His grief, his brain tends to unhinge. And frantically, he plots revenge. He has no children, nor can he feel a father's grief. Did you say all my children? Oh, hellish, ravenous kite! All three at one swoop. Kind heavens, bring but this dire fiend of Scotland and myself, but face to face, and set him within reach of my king's sword. Nay, then, it is time to do it. Fie, my lord, fie, a soldier and afraid. What need we fear? Who knows it? There's none dares call our power to account. And yet, who would have thought the old man to have so much blood in him. Macduff had once a wife. Where is she now? What? Will these hands ne'er be clean? Yet here's the smell of blood still. Not all the perfumes of Arabia will sweeten this little head.
fly all. Till Burnham would remove to Dunson, and I cannot fear. What's the boy Malcolm? What are all the English? Are they not of women born and to all such? I am invincible. Send out our horse and scour the country around. Send out your scouts. This is the word of burden. Let every soldier hew him down a bow and bear it before him. By that we may keep our numbers undiscovered by the enemy. The tyrant will find in Dunsinane but little safety. His very subjects will against him rise. Have your good men who proudly o'er the walls. The cry is still they come. Our castle strength will laugh a siege to scorn. There let them lie. They'll famine eat them up. What noise is that? Great sir, the queen is dead. She should have died hereafter. I brought her here to see my victims, and not to die. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, Tomorrow creeps in a steely pace from day to day to the last minute of recorded time. And all our yesterdays have lighted fools to their eternal night. Out, out, short candle. Life's but a walking shadow. Poor planer that struts and frets his hour upon the stage and then is heard no more. It is a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying. Thou comes to use thy tongue, thy story quickly. I look towards Vernon, and anon me thought the hood began to move. Liar! I am slave! They bid me not to fear till Vernon Wood should come to none Dunson then. And now the wood is on its march this way. Arm! Arm! The monster has forsook me. Too base to fly. Who's he that's not a woman born? For such a one I am to fear. Or none. This way the noise is. Tyrant, show thy face. If thou be slain and by no hand of mine, my wife and children's ghosts will haunt thee for it. Let me but find him, fortune. Turn, hellhound, turn! Of all my now I have avoided thee, but get thee back. My soul is too much clogged with blood of thine already. I'll have no words. Thy villainies are worse than ever yet were punished with a curse. None of a woman born can spill my blood. Then let the devil tell thee. Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. I scorn to yield, and will, in spite of witchcraft, fight with thee. If by a man it be thy fate to die, they fight. Macbeth falls. This for my royal master, Duncan. This. For my dearest friend, my wife. This, 
for those pledges of our loves, my children. Farewell, vain world, and what's most vain in it, ambition. Now, Scotland, thou shalt see bright day again. That clouds were moved, which did eclipse the sun, and rain down blood upon thee. Long live King Malcolm, King of Scotland, and may the people's prayers wait upon you, as all their curses did Macbeth pursue. His vices shall make your virtue shine more bright, as a fair day succeeds a stormy night. Thank you.